Hi guys, Leanne Yennefer here with another episode of Seduce Me. So last time we had sexy time with James. <laughs> and uh, we went to our room. And we fainted. So James brought us to our room. And uh, let's continue. I slowly sat up. A stretching from the tiredness that still lingered. I felt a very soft pain on the, my neck and shoulders, and I could feel my swollen lips. That's not good, girly. I mean, you can make out with someone, but you shouldn't have swollen lips. <laughs> Pulse gently in healing. However, when I looked down at my body, I saw that my shirt had been pulled back and rebuttoned, as if nothing happened between me and James. I was just missing my ribbon. Before I turned to get out of bed, though, I spotted my ribbon on the pillow bes beside the one I slept on. It was tied in a nice bow around a red rose that was freshly bloomed with a small note attached to it. I gently slipped the note from the tie and opened it to read it. I apologize for indulging myself as I did. I hope that you will not dislike me when you awaken. That's so cute. I mean, you make the decision to go on, and... He is like, I hope you don't dislike me for what I did, for when it went too far, even though the character did as well. Oh, he's so cute. I'm glad I chose James, although I really want to know Matthew's pet as well. I stared the, I stared the note, unbelieving what I read. Why would I dislike him? I let it happen, and I enjoyed it. It was cute, though, to imagine him asking for forgiveness for something we both did and enjoyed. I brought the rose to my nose and gently inhaled its soft fragrance. <laughs> I was just thinking, what should I do? <laughs> like gently. Oh, should I do it? Should I do it? Okay, let's go on. I indulged myself too. I indulged myself too, James. I looked at the time out of curiosity. The w large white numbers on my phone showed five... 31 p.m. Yikes. Four hours of being knocked out. And I still feel tired. It was Sunday, so I allowed to sleep longer if I wanted to. The reminder of the night passed by. Surprisingly uneventful. The boys continued to train with each other, but were kind enough to stop and make me dinner. I was glad for that. Unsurprisingly, the food was perfect. But it felt a little empty without the boys to eat with me. The most li they most likely had already eaten. But still, I felt lonely. I couldn't let it bother me. I ate and went back to my room to study and sleep. Surprisingly, I felt good going to bed that night. I felt like I could have a peaceful sleep after the previous rough nights I had. I felt good. Da -da 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 -da. I knew that I would. Da -da 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 -da. I feel good. <laughs> so good. So good. I feel good. Da -da -da -da. I drifted to sleep and woke up almost flawlessly the next morning. No grogginess, no aches, perfectly energized and bright eyed. Gonna have that song in my head the whole day now. Man, how long has it been since I got that much good sleep? Couple days at least. I looked to my alarm clock. I woke up ten minutes before my alarm. Well, hey, must be my lucky day. Karma owed me some luck. After all I had gone through in merely a handful of days, I deserve to get some good luck. Aesthetic for the day ahead. I turned off my alarms before alarms she got more than one before they could ring and got dressed. However, my phone started to quickly buzz from an incoming text. Huh? Who's texting me this early? Yo Anderson, you're carpooling with us from now on. We're not letting you waste your money on a bus. Get ready and be at your gate at seven stat. Okay, will do. I smiled. My friends were the best. I couldn't drive yet, and I didn't have a car, 
so it was awesome that my friends would let me carpool. I checked the time. 6.30. Perfect. I can eat some breakfast before they come. I packed my bag and carried it downstairs towards the kitchen. As I entered the dining room, I saw a plate with egg, toast and bacon sitting on the table. A fresh steaming cup of coffee sat next to the plate with the sugar and creamer on the side. I walked to the table and couldn't believe what I was seeing. Who made this? As I spoke aloud, a small red note caught my attention. Have a good day. Yours. My heart skipped a beat as I finished. I could tell it was from one of the boys. Maybe it was from him? I smiled before putting the note in my bag and eating up. The food was so delicious, I devoured every amazing bite. I looked at the time again. Time to go. I quickly rushed to the doors, checking myself in the passing mirror. I wasn't wanting to... I wasn't wanting to impress anyone, but I still needed to look decent. Before I could reach the handle of the door, however, someone took my hand. Huh? I turned to James, who was holding my hand back with a concerned frown on his face. My name. Your name? My true name isn't James, miss. I want you to know my real name if something were to happen. Oh, I never really liked the name James. <gasps> Hope your name isn't stupid, though. Well, names are not stupid, you know. They're just unique or different. Maybe it will be interesting. Let's see. His true name? What did he mean? Why was he telling me this now? Good questions, good questions. I remember reading about demons' names from the journal I read yesterday. If you knew a demon's true name, you could summon them to you. Ooh, like that! No matter where you were or where they were. That's awesome. James gently pulled me to him and leaned close to whisper in my ear. My name is Raystro. Raystro. Oh, I hope I don't have to remember that. Raystro. Alright. As he said his name, I could feel it lock into my memory. Okay, so the, probably the game will remember. Something in my head would make sure I would never forget it. James pulled away and smiled at me, despite still carrying worry in his eyes. If you are in any danger, call my name. I promise that I'll come and help you. Oh, we're going to be in danger, aren't we? I will do that then. <laughs> Thank you. I stared up at James, unable to say anything. I could only nod in response. James smiled before kissing my hand and heading into the dining room. Something told me that name would be eventually used. It It's not how the sentences go, but it... It's okay. And right on cue, Naomi drove up to the gates with Suzu waiting me down. I rushed out the door and we headed to school, talking about homework and the coming day. We made it into the school without a hitch. Our lockers were in the same part of the hall, so we quickly unloaded what we needed to and got our important books and necessities. Bare necessities! Did 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 did. I'm in a musical mood today. Sorry, guys. First incident of the day. As I walked towards Suzu and Naomi, who were both waiting for me on the upside of the opposite side of the hall, something hooked my ankle and made me fall forward. What? Is it a demon? Is it the devil? Oh no! I'm strangled here in the <laughs> the rope of my uh, microphone. Okay, I'm back. Ooh! Whoa! Ow! Hey, are you okay? Who did that? The three of us looked ba back to see Lisette and her gaggle of girls. Lisette had a look of complete innocence while the girls around her giggled like no tomorrow. Oh, she pisses me off. Why, you little... Suzu, don't! You just can't, can't trust people like that. One moment they are, oh, sorry for your grandfather. Oh, and then they trip you. 
I felt a giant fire of anger burn my stomach as I stared at Lisette. Today was not the only time this had happened to me. However, it was now clear who was behind these incidents. What a bitch she is! Go do something useful with your life. I hate people who try to make others miserable. I mean, don't you have something better to do? <sighs> okay. Even if she was innocent, and one of the, her goons did it, I'm sorry. Again, even if she was innocent and one of her goons did it, it was now obvious that Lisette was the mastermind just from the look on her face. Well, she looks kind of evil. <laughs> In the picture, though. She was no friend, nor would she ever be. I had to do something. I can stand up and walk away. I can glare into her soul or get her. Okay, we're not going to get her. I don't think violence is something that would solve. Stand up and walk away would be good. Showing her like, fuck you, man. But I want to scare her a bit. So I think I'm going to glare in her soul. Maybe some magic will happen. She gets a pimple or something. I don't know. <laughs> so let's glare into her soul. I glared hard at Lisette. Feeling wisp of air and magic through my skin and veins. Oh yeah. However, I stopped at what I saw. Oh, that's not good. That's not good. That's not Lisette. That's another. You see, got red eyes, so that's not good. It's a woman. Around Lisette was a dark purple aura that seems all too familiar. It was like demon magic, but it seems to be tamer. That's not good. That's not good. I slowly rose to my feet, collecting my belongings as I continued to stare at Lisette. Something was off. Definitely! As I continued to look at her, the aura grew, forming a shadow behind Lisette with red eye-like shapes glowing from within its darkness. That doesn't sound very friendly. <laughs> Anderson, you alright? If you could see what I see, then no. <laughs> I couldn't respond. I was entranced by a small hum in the air. It was distant, almost like an ethereal whisper you hear in horror games. Oh, I don't like horror games. Don't, don't. I like horror games. You know, they're interesting, and the story is most of the time interesting, but I can't really take scares that good. You know, my blood pressure rises a lot. And I have to watch out even uh, for, the, for the way my blood pressure rises. So, yeah. I would love to see a lot of horror films or play a lot of horror games, but I just cannot. I have to watch out for myself. Because if it gets too high and it drops back, I sometimes faint. So, But it doesn't happen that often, but it's still something I have to look out for. But it was a real... But it was real. It sounded vaguely of a woman humming a tune I didn't recognize. Hey, are you okay? Let's go. We'll be late for class. I suddenly felt the need to walk away, so I did. Naomi and Suzu scrambled to catch up and follow at my new, quickened pace. Okay, so she is really... She's really freaked out by what she's seeing. And it's... I will be freaking out too. You know, I will be like, I'm going home, bye. <laughs> no, no. Sheesh, Anderson. You look like you saw a ghost. Something possessing her? <gasps> that wouldn't be good. Are you really okay? That fall was pretty bad. I think she saw underneath Lisette's cake face and saw the devil itself. Ha! 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 Suzu! Ha! Ha! Oh, Suzu, hush! No. Something was wrong with Lisette. It was more than just her being mean. There was something, or someone, watching over Lisette. Or they were watching me behind Lisette. What they were doing, I didn't know, but it was definitely demonic. Surprisingly, the rest of the school day went off without another incident. I went to my... My mic fell. <laughs> I have to find another place for my mic. It's falling a lot these days. All right. Again. Surprisingly, <laughs> the rest of the school day went off without an 
other incidents. I went to my classes, had lunch, and was anxious to get home. As the bell rang for school to end, I felt my phone vibrate in my pocket. Huh? A text? From Dad? Why are we not hearing his voice? That's weird. I mean, when Susu texted us, we heard her voice. Okay. I'll be picking you up today. Make sure you're ready to go where I get there. When I get there. Cannot do that, Dad. Alright. That's kind of surprising. That is, that's kind of a surprise. I, it, I, it was so surprising I couldn't talk anymore. <laughs> I quickly headed back to my locker and got my things before waiting for Naomi and Susu. Hey, are you ready to go? Actually, my dad's picking me up. Really? Okay, I guess that kind of makes sense. No, it doesn't. If you knew my dad, then no. <laughs> we'll drive home together next time. Tell your dad that we've got you covered from now on. Yeah, please, please come get me, so I don't have to spend more time with a man. Yeah, ha ha ha. Alright. Even when I left, something didn't seem right. My dad texted me to say this. Why wasn't he... Why was he going to pick me up? Had I done something wrong? I didn't know. I waved goodbye to Naomi and Susie before heading off to the usual spot where my dad picks me up. I took the time to listen to music while I waited. Okay, I'm gonna stop it right here. I cannot have that man in my life right now. <laughs> so guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next episode of Seduce Me.